Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a mock deck deck. So this is not a deck that I own. I actually did own Tamishi for a little bit of time. I changed it to Grand Arbiter. Um, but I really like doing mock deck decks. Basically, the whole rationale, the whole point behind this is these are cards that are on a budget, things that you can run if you're looking to build this specific commander. I will be... So the, my other thing too is like, this isn't like necessarily like the hundred I would go with, you know what I'm saying? It's more just to like give you an idea of like pieces, cards, good synergies that work with the commander. I will be talking about the more expensive cards that are on here that might be like a dollar or two. And I do have a maybe board where I put more expensive cards that are going to be in there. Um, also too, now that I'm actually thinking about it, I don't actually remember if I've done my Grand Arbiter deck tech? No, I'm pretty sure I did, right? I also did do um, my Grand Arbiter deck tech, which is taken a lot. Like I started with this and then I built it up to be um, Grand Arbiter. I'll list that in the down bar below along with this actual deck. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. I'm not going to be talking about each individual card or anything like that, but I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I do this. Okay. So first off, we're going to run through artifacts. So we've got, um, we got our hundred cards or whatever, whatever. Um, this is what our curve is looking like. Um, very low CMC, which we love. Primarily blue, which makes a lot of sense knowing me as a deck builder. Um, okay, let's just uh, like jump on into it, right? Let's move this. Oh, okay. Also too, um, it's actually cut off, but the deck is sitting right now at Card Kingdom of a maximum of $67. And then from TCG it says fifth about $50. So just to give you a little bit of a frame of reference. And like I said, okay, artifacts and um, enchantments. Where are the enchantments? Over here. We're actually going to go through those first. Well, actually, no, sorry. Let's start with the lands. That makes the most sense. Okay. So pretty basic split with the lands. We got an even split of islands and planes. Obviously you can play around that. That it's like totally dependent on that. I always like a more basic heavy deck. Um, We've got our, our bounce land. Bounce lands are going to be really, really great for us because we want to maximize off of Tamishi ability we want to be bouncing things back to our hand Azoria's Chantress gets us there we got buried room in because we've got a lot of artifacts they might end up in the graver we want to get it back it's also very affordable we have evolving wilds along with terrific expanse so we can get access to our colors and then we have um ghost town so this card oh look can it show up okay this card is a little bit more on the pricey side it's about three bucks I have this card in um, Omnoth. And there are a couple of cards that do very similar type of effects, but I really like Ghost Town because it does add a colors to your pool. Your two colors, that doesn't really matter as much, but for zero, you can return this back to um, its owner's hand and you can only use this in another player's turn. But I like this because it's an optional thing. You don't have to do it. I would really recommend cards like this. We've also got very basic. We've got our Myriad Landscape. Of course we do. This card is a necessity. It's about two bucks this card's incredible though because this card says that it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands that's going to be very easy for us to do and then um you can return target and store sorcery from your graver to on top of your library you can do insane stuff with this card in tamishi because you can bounce this land constantly with tamishi and then you're able to just get um you know you're able to just get your instance of sorceries back from on top of your thing this is a necessity an absolute must it's worth the two bucks promise i promise reliquary tower same thing it's a little bit more expensive this one six you could if you don't want to run reliquary tower i have another card in here that gives you no maximum hand size you don't have to run reliquary tower you can run arcane whatever there's a ton of draw in here a ton and we're not i'm not just talking about to me she's ability i'm talking about like a ton of draw stuff so i'm just heads up you don't have to get reliquary tower i would really recommend it at six bucks i get it but it's it's a necessity in my opinion um because of that so fun thing about tamishi is tamishi is a wizard which capitalizes and maximizes with this little card called riptide laboratory um this card is actually new to me one of my friends was telling me about it actually for Riku and I was like oh my gosh this is so good because it offers that little bit of protection so you're able to protect Tamishi, bounce them back to your hands. You might actually have other wizards too in your creatures, we'll talk about that when we get there. I like this card, it's called Roadside Reliquary, you sack it, you draw a card if you control an artifact and you draw a card if you control an enchantment. There's really not a whole lot to say, it's a good card though. 
Tem- Temple of Enlightenment, a simple little scry. Do, do, do you need this card? No, I just, I wanted to throw in another special to it. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And the rest are basics. Okay, um, let's do, I said we would do our artifacts and our enchantments, and let's do that first. So, Mad Acceleration, Azuri Signet, whatever. Okay, I'm going to talk about this card very similarly to another card. This card, this card is called Blood Clock, and this card, um, Umbilicus. So, both of these cards are very, very cheap. They're under a buck, and they do the same thing. The thing about this build with Tamishi is you can do this build in a couple of different ways. You can be it like you're bouncing your stuff. You could be like you're bouncing your opponent's stuff. You can do a hybrid. You can also do individual instants and sorceries, which we have a couple of those that bounce something. These are a consistent thing to bounce. And I love these cards because it's a drain. If not, if not, they, if it's on each player's upkeep, this does hit you too. However, you have so many ETB things. You've got like that. Remember we talked about that mystic sanctuary or whatever. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about here. You can bounce that back to your hand and now look at you. You're able to get back at that instant of sorcery. This card is so incredibly cool. It's permanent. So you can get any sort of permanent you want back to your hand. Otherwise you pay too late. You're always going to want to bounce something for the most part. This card's great. These cards are both great. You're, you, if you're building this deck, you need these two cards, okay? Commander Sphere, we're not going to talk about. This is the card that I talked about that has no maximum hand size um, that just popped up. It's called Decanter of Endless Water. There's very similar stuff that does this. Um, Arcane... No, not Arcane Signet. Arcane Signet is also a good uh, mana acceleration, but I forgot. I always forget the name of that artifact that's two mana. A Thought Vessel. You could run Thought Vessel in here too. I just threw this in here, but you could run any of those or, you know, multiple. I, Spellbook I didn't even throw in here, I don't think, but you could also run Spellbook. They all do the same thing. It just depends. This one gets you a mana. That's cool. Um, we have a couple of these sorts of... Um, these things where you sacrifice and then you get an effect and then with Tamishi you could um get those back to your uh to the battlefield to the battlefield right uh yeah to the battlefield so you could get this back so this is basically one of your things that's going to help you destroy those artifacts or their enchantments Icar wellspring is a really really cool card um etbs or it's put into the graveyard it's a draw card we love that for us okay this card's two bucks it's worth it promise 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 and i'll tell you why because when you get this card into your graveyard you can bring this back with tamishi for only that white you don't need to pay the x because it's zero so you basically net two mana every time you want to bounce a land. This card is so cool. I would definitely, definitely recommend this card in there. Mindstone we're not going to talk about. Um, Sorry, this is like, sometimes it like juts in and out. I don't know why it does this. We have, um, I don't know why the art on this looks a little grainy. Is that that card? Or yeah, it's this card. It just looks a little grainy. Um, They're very similar stuff that does things like this. You sack it to draw two um, and then discard. This is not, th- like this and like your, your Mind Stone type stuff, like these are just kind of whatever. Like you can run them, you could not. They're going to do very basic stuff. Same with the card like this. This is called Moon Silver Key. Um, Tutor for an artifact. Oh, sorry. This is artifact. Sorry. This one is artifact or basic. I do really like this one because it's both, but there's very similar stuff that you have. Um, then we've got this card called Navigation Orb. Tutor for two basics or gates. We don't have any gates, but if you were running gates, you could get those too. They do enter the battlefield tapped, which is actually really nice. Um, or sorry, you put one onto the battlefield tap. So very similar stuff. You don't need this one, but it is there for you. Um, sculpting Steel, I threw in here. I actually genuinely didn't know that this card was this cheap. It's actually a buck. Do you need this card? No, but it enters as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. You don't have to control the artifact. So if someone else has a cool artifact. Boom, there you go. You've got one too. Soul Ring, obviously. Um, this card is very similar to Tormod's Crypt. We've got a little bit of that... Um, do we necessarily need both? No, I just threw them both in here. I like Tormods a lot because you um, can get this back consistently with that. I threw in a slip of boots. You could also do Greaves. Um, there's a ton of sort of these. Uh, Whisper Silk Cloak is another one that gives your commander a little bit of protection. So there you go. We already talked about this card in Witching Well is a very basic, similar thing that's going to um, get you to draw cards and scry, which we love. Um, okay, um, we're going to skip over creatures. Don't worry, we're going to come back to them. But we're going to do enchantments. So we've got some really, really fun artifacts and enchantments. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of artifacts and enchantments. 
Um, the first one up we have is Confounding Conundrum. This is a card I don't think a lot of people know about. Basically, you draw a card when it enters the battlefield, and whenever a land ETBs, if that player had another land, they return a land. So they basically can only play one land a turn, so you're stopping your opponents from mana acceleration. Dissipation Field is an absolute must in this deck. This card also dropped in price. I didn't even realize it was that cheap. I honestly thought it was like two bucks. I think I was thinking about the foil, but this card is a must in Tamishi. Whenever anything does damage to you, it you bounce that back to your hand. Note also too, this is not just for creatures. So if they have like an artifact, for example, that does damage to you, it goes back to their hand. Love that. Thinking through our win conditions, how are we winning with this deck? You're not a super creature heavy deck. You know, we've only got 11 in here and you're probably not going to run a ton in here. I wanted to run a couple of cards. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps cutting out like that. But um, basically, I ran a couple of cards like this that do very similar things that whenever a land ETBs or something like that, you get these tokens. This one I like, Um, you get a 2-2 whenever a land ETBs, which I thought was cool. Um, we've got Lunar Force. Is this a necessity? No, but it's a cute little thing. Opponent casts a spell, it gets countered. And you can also bring this back, which I thought was really cool with Tamishi. We've got Mana Breach, which this one's a little more expensive. It's about three bucks, but whenever a player plays a spell, they bounce a land. In my opinion, this is one of the top necessities if you're building this deck. We got Omen in the Sea, uh, Planar Collapse, a little like a little bit of a board wipe. Um, Precognition Field, you do have quite a bit of instants and sorceries. I like this card. Um, Retreat to Amaria, very similar to the um, Fel Feldar Retreat that we talked about. Rule of Law, just to stop your opponents. I figured let's throw a little bit of, you know, we're, we're taxes in here. Let's throw some of those taxes in here. It does impact you too, just as a note. Seal of Cleansing, we love this card. This is very similar to the uh, Dispeller's Capsule that we talked about earlier. Soul Snare, a little bit of that protection, man. And this card is very cheap. You can get it back with Tamishi. We love it. Telepathy. <laughs> this card is just funny. I like it. You don't need to run it, but it's cute. It's cheeky. I like it. And then we have um, the Birth of Melitus. Um, this, I thought what was really cool about this is you could keep bouncing for that saga. So you could constantly get a planes and get it into your hand, which I thought was really cool. It's also only two mana. So I thought that was really affordable. So um, cool, cool, cool. So let's jump into our creatures. Then we'll do our instants and our sorcery. So we've got creatures, not a ton. Like I mentioned, we're not trying to, you know, we're not doing like a ton of creatures here, but we first have um, Dranifa. Um, so this is return target artifact. You can build on his hand. It also is two, and you could do this as many times as you have because you don't have to tap it, which we love. We have Ethereum Sculptor. Do we need this? No. The thing about Tamishi is you could go more artifacts, more enchantments, or you could do a split. I threw Ethereum Sculptor in there because it's it's a buck, you know, whatever. But if you are playing more artifacts, I would definitely recommend this because they cost cheaper. We love that. Knight of the White Orchid, it's a buck, but I really like it. You're gonna need mana acceleration in this deck. We have quite a bit in here. You, you're probably gonna wanna put in more because you need to get access to that. Speaking of, we got Core Cartographer, love this card. Uh, Loyal Warhound, another similar. We're all in the similar veins here. Maloku, the Clouded Mirror. I think this card is really funny. You bounce a land and you create a 1-1 one, one blue illusion. Maloku's funny, it's also cheap. Then we have um, Scare Tiller which this card is when it becomes tapped you can either put a land onto the battlefield or return target land from your graveyard to uh the battlefield tap both of these abilities are really great i would really recommend this card for this deck like i mentioned you're very conscientious of your lands in this deck talent i threw in here because we have a decent amount of instants and sorceries and we're gonna want access to that um reality chip i threw in there like we said we need our lands then we have um transplant theorist what a fun little name when this or other etbs you may draw a card if you do discard a card and then you can put target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library i thought this card was just a cute little effect like i said if you're running a lot more artifacts and enchantments throw it in there and then we have walking atlas um which this card's a buck but i would recommend because we do need access to those lands so let's go into our instance and then our sorceries so for our instance um these to me, like this whole deck, you could just do whatever you want with, but like instance in particular, you know, with your counter spells and things, we have a couple of these type of effects where they, you can bounce something like those instants. Then we have obviously our cards like Blood Clock, which do that um, basically every single turn. Um, Blink of an Eye though is something. And if you do control it, which I think is really cool, like if it's kicked, uh, you get to, sorry, if it's kicked, uh, you get to draw a card. This card's cool. I threw in Blue Sun Zenith because I love to draw cards, and this is a big card. Like, you have a lot that are like, I just about off the draw card, whatever, whatever, but this is just a, like, I'm gonna draw a bunch of things. Boomerang, very simple. Cancel, we gotta have a counter, some counter spells in there. Capsize. 
is one of the best because if you buy back it, you basically always have this in your hand. A lot of mana, but as you notice, our curve is actually really low in this deck, which is done on purpose. You need it to be low with Tamishi, man. You're bouncing lands. Um, Deprive is a necessity counterspell, man. You, there's a good chance you've probably never heard of this card before, and it's actually really good in this deck because as additional cost, you bounce it, you counter target spell. It's a slightly better counterspell because you bounce it, you get the trigger with Tamishi. Dispel, Factor Fiction, which I love. Those cards go into your graveyard and you get access to them with Tamishi. We love that. Geist Wave, it's non-land permanent. If you control it, you get to draw a card. If not, it's a very simple bounce thing. Negate, we've got Paradoxal Out Outcome I threw in there because if someone tries to kill your stuff, whatever, whatever, you just Paradoxal Outcome that, bounce everything back to your hand and you get to draw cards out of it. We love it. I threw in a Resculpt in there because a lot of the effects like this, um, things like reality shift rapid hybridization pognified those sorts of like very cheap creature spells those can be a little bit on the more expensive side um but this one is actually very affordable it's 50 cents they get a four for you don't care because it's exile we love it and it's artifact too so you might exile that i threw in a sword supply share of course we did thirst for knowledge is really cool um it's a very cool i would definitely recommend it um assuming you are going more artifact heavy um because you get to draw and then you discard uh, one of those artifacts, so it's great. And then Thirst for Meeting is the basically same exact thing as Thirst for Knowledge, except for discard enchantments, so that's that. Let's do our sorceries. So uh, we've got Brilliant Restoration I just threw in here because I figured you'd get back all those artifacts and enchantments, which I thought was very funny, and it's very, very cheap. Mana-wise, it's not. It's one of your higher CMC things, but you don't really care. Uh, Consuming Tide, very expensive. Um, this card is very, very cool. You get to draw cards, which is really awesome. There's a really good chance that you will be drawing cards um, off of this, and then you get to bounce stuff. Flood of Recollection, I've talked about this card a lot. I really love this card as a little bit of a way that you can get an instant or sorcery back. This card's great. Flood of Tears is a bigger heavy hitter like Consuming Tide. Um, Return on non permanent to the owner hand. If you control four or more, you can put a permanent... Um, from your hand onto the battlefield, which is really, really cool. Uh, Preordain I just threw in there. Um, I didn't, like, brainstorm, like, whatever. Like, I just threw Preordain in here. This card is apparently, like, four bucks. Okay, I didn't know that on Card Kingdom. That's crazy. But anyways, you could run any sort of things. You might not even need this card or whatever, but I, I always like these. And the last one that I have before we jump into the maybe board is Time Wipe. I really like this board wipe. A lot of the board wipes I did notice were on the slightly more expensive side, like Wrath of God, Supreme Verdict, all that sort of stuff are going to be a couple bucks. Do I recommend them? Absolutely, I do. You're not super creature heavy where you're probably not going to care, but I really like Time Wipe. It is one more additional mana than a lot of those other board wipes that we just mentioned. However, you do get to bounce a creature to um, your, your hand, which is probably going to be your Tamishi, so... Let's talk about the maybe board. I like to throw a couple of more expensive cards on here. Now, obviously, I'm not putting every single card that I would necessarily recommend in there. That would take us a long time. But I threw in a couple of things that I thought could be helpful. The first is Ghostly Prison, and very similarly to that, I have Propaganda. These cards, I thought for that little bit of protection, I thought would be a really, really great option for you. I also threw, I could have thrown in Solitary Confinement now that I'm thinking about that card too. It is very, very affordable. You just skip your draw step, but you prevent all the combat damage. I think that it is to you. That card's really cool. Um, and if someone kills you, you can always get it back with Tamishi because it's an enchantment, I believe. But these cards are really, really great. Um, they do the same thing. You need that little bit of protection. I just figured, you know, this card's like six bucks and this card's like, you know, three or four. So I figured let's just throw it on there. Mystic Remora, I actually really like. I'm not a huge fan of Mystic Remora, but in this deck, I actually like it because you can bounce it with Tamishi and then you don't have to worry about the cumulative upkeep cost. Love that for us. This is another more expensive card, but again, that's why I do it on the maybe board. I like to throw it in there because maybe. We've got Overburden. Whenever a, a player puts a creature card into play, they bounce a land. I thought this card was a really, really good option in this deck. I would recommend picking up this card, but if you're budget conscious and you can't afford it, I totally get it. But if you happen to have like half of these cards and you're just looking to spend the money on like a $10, $11 card, I would recommend this um, because it does those similar blood clock type of things. Psychonic Rift, I just, this card's always good. It's just expensive. And the last one was Tensei's Divining Top. I don't normally love top in decks, but I do think that it works well in this deck when you are drawing a lot of cards and manipulating that uh, sort of thing. So 
Guys, that is everything for this mock Tamishi deck tech. Um, I really hope that you guys like this. Let me know um, if you're planning on building Tamishi, if you take any inspiration from this, let me know if there's other mock deck techs you want me to do because I do enjoy filming them for you guys. It's very fun for me. So uh, that's everything. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you all in my next one.